Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellio III maintains that there are no misuse funds in the department's 2017 budget. Contrary to the claims of ex OFW representative Aniceto Bertiz, Noel Maribok tells us why. Department of Labor and Employment Secretary Silvestre Bello III defended their underspending of their 2017 budget. The secretary insisted that there was no misused funds. This is contrary to what AXA OFW representative Anisito Bertiz is claiming that about 1.8 billion pesos was allocated in the administrative cost and not in the anti-poverty program last 2017. The lawmaker referred to the Commission on Audit's report as his basis. Ni pwede yun eh. Kaya nagtataka naman ako saan nakakuha ng figure na 75% ginastos namin sa administrative expense and only 25% para sa project or program. Secretary Bello emphasized there were no missing funds. The Labor Secretary also explained some causes of underspending in 2017. Yung K-12, yung K-12 for example, they gave us so much, 500 million, eh, in the expectation na maraming mga teachers na mawalan ng trabaho. So yun, yung funds na yun was raided for them as assistance. Pero konti naman ang na-displaced na teachers. But Congressman Bertiz challenged Dole to just release its detailed expenses for the year. I-present nila yung hinihingi kong report, yung SAOB, Statement of uh, Appropriations and uh, Disbursement. Tsaka yung comprehensive detailed report ng other programs and admin costs based on the COA report. Yesterday, the two officials got into a heated debate during the budget deliberation of the Labor Department in the lower house. It is expected that in the upcoming plenary debates, the same issues will be raised by the lawmaker. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinol personally cooked sample of weevil-infested rice himself and ate it on live television together with fried galunggong or round scat. The secretary wants to diminish public fears on health risks of eating weevil-infested rice and to counter rumors on formalin-contaminated galunggo. Okay, talk to you. Galunggo ngay formalin? Kain na natin. Walang formalin ito. Wala naman ako sinabing bukbuk ang kakainin ko. Ang sinabi ko lang, pwede pang kainin yung bigas na ginapangan ng bukbok kapag hinugasan mo lang. The DA Secretary explains that he has not yet received information on the formal return of the National Food Authority under DA. But since they have been tagged in the rice controversy, Pinyon says they will join the NFA until the rice issue is solved. But we are working closely with NFA. Whether or not the NFA will be transferred to the DA, I have made it a decision, a personal decision, na pangangatawanan ko na ito sapagkat nadadamay na rin lang ang DA sa isyo ng presyo ng bigas at tutulungan na namin yung NFA para ma-resolve itong problema ito. Calls for the resignation of the head of the National Food Authority and the agency's abolition continue to mount amid the reported shortage in rice supply. Grace Kassin tells us why. Rice supply-related issues are still dogging the National Food Authority, months after it addressed the problem in available cheaper rice supply in local markets. The agency has again grabbed headlines following reports on 300,000 sacks of rice that were infested with rice weevils due to delays in unloading, and the rice crisis in Zamboanga City, which was later averted, that led to the city's declaration of state of calamity. These issues have led some groups to call for the resignation of NFA Administrator Jason Aquino for alleged failing to perform his function. Dahil hindi naman nito nagagampanan ang kanyang tungkulin na sa matagal na panahon, almost 8 months na, na nananatiling napakataas ang presyo ng bigas. Uh, uh, nanan, uh, yung kasagruduhan natin sa pagkain ay inasa sa importasyon. Senator Bam Aquino also released a statement on Friday calling NFA Administrator Aquino to leave his post, citing the rice crisis has brought embarrassment to the country. Other lawmakers like Senators Grace Po, Kiko Pangilinan, Cynthia Villar, and House Minority Leader Danilo Suarez have also called for Aquino's resignation, while Ilocos Norte Governor Amy Marcos wants the NFA to be abolished, saying the agency is no longer serving its purpose. 
itinatagyan ng ama ko. Pero ako na magsasabi that uh, binaliktad nila ang uh, purposes ng NFA. NFA spokesperson Rex Esto Perez refuses to comment on the issue, but he hinted at the possible negative impact of the agency's dissolution. Effect, eh, ngayon nga nangyayari with the NFA, nagkakagulo pa tayo. No? Uh, Lalong-lalo na pagwala ngayon. Governor Marcos meanwhile suggests to revive the Kadiwa Rolling Store created by her father, where government can sell basic food items to depressed areas at a very low price. Grace Kasten, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Private rice dealers can now import rice stocks beyond minimum access volume. According to Presidential Spokesperson Hari Roque, the National Food Authority Council has implemented the step to counter the soaring prices of rice in the country. It can be recalled that the World Trade Organization or WTO allowed the Philippines to implement the 10-year quota system for rice importation or the minimum access volume of 805,200 metric tons each year. Pero dahil ito po'y minimum, po pwede pong um, tumaas pa ang ating importation at dahil sa mga pangyayari po at para mapababa po ang presyo ng bigas, uh, mag-authorize po ang NFA Council para sa pribadong sektor, ulitin ko po, para sa pribadong sektor na mag-authorize, na mag ang cut ng bigas beyond the minimum access volume for 2018. The NFA Council will therefore allow for the importation of rice by the private sector. We ask the cooperation of the NFA administration in this regard. Some fish vendors are having a hard time selling fish as entry of imported galunggong or round scad looms. John Nano tells us why. Fish retailers are complaining of low sales after reports of formerly treated galunggong or round scad circulated in markets. Fish vendor like Anna says she is now contemplating on whether to remove galunggong from her stalls as sales have been slack since the rumors begun. Luma, gawa na mga balitang may bormalin daw yung galunggong. Kaya namumula na, wala kaming binta. Barang nakakatakot, baka nga malugi, hindi mabili. Starting September, imported round scad will be available in markets. The shipment will be coming from Taiwan, Malaysia and China as arranged by the Department of Agriculture, according to Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Director Undersecretary Eduardo Gongona. There is no reason to worry with the introduction of imported galunggong in local markets, adding that all imported products pass through careful inspection of authorities, especially food items as required by the Food Safety Act. Hindi totoo yun kasi very efficient na ngayon ang importation kung nagkuhan tayo na mag import di ba? Pero kung meron mang issue na ganyan, kami pa lang sa BIPAR at yung bag agency nagpa, na nagpapatupad ng, ng Food Safety Act, doon pa lang sa custom zone, hindi na natin may pag examine na po namin yan. At pag meron siyang kontaminado siya ng mga chemicals na mag, nag, ma, 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 nasisira sa ating kalusugan, hindi na namin po yan papupuntan sa wet market, hindi na ilalabas sa custom zone at papabalikin na niya kung saan siya nanggaling. Under the order signed by Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinyol, the Philippines will import a total of 17,000 tons of round scud in response to the shortage of fish supply in the country as a result of monsoon rains that hampered fishing activities in coastal areas, consequently causing the rise in prices of fish. At present, the price of round scud in local markets is 140 pesos per kilogram. For now, the BFAR and DTI cannot tell yet the price of imported galunggong, but the agencies assure that its price is cheaper than the locally produced round scat. However, some groups have expressed opposition to the measure, calling it an insult to our archipelagic country. Napaka-insulto po sa ating bayan kasi may malawak po tayong mga inland bodies of water like yung mga lawa, yung mga ilog, pans na pwede nating Pwede tayo mag-cultivate ng mga isda aside from marine capture. Despite opposition and fears, the Agriculture Department will push through with the importation to stabilize its supply and price. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Trade and Industry and the Department of Agriculture are looking to regulate traders or middlemen following complaints of higher prices in various products. Monoxon tells us why. The Departments of Agriculture and Trade and Industry are set to investigate traders and retailers relating to the prices they are imposing on various products that are higher than the suggested retail price. 
The agencies are seeking for an explanation on the matter in order to formulate a policy that would regulate traders. The DTI and DA will also check on the possibility of removing intermediary layers to make the prices even lower. Yung presyo sa palengke at presyo ng traders hindi sumasabay sa presyo sa farm. Earlier, the agency officials conducted another price monitoring inspection and observed that agri-products are priced higher than the suggested retail amount. In Mega Qmart, red onions are sold at 20 pesos a kilogram, white onions by 25 pesos, garlic by 10 pesos, and galunggong by 20 pesos, all of which are higher than the SRP. Retailers say they have no choice but to impose higher price because they also got the products at a high price from traders. 130 ang sabi nila pero ang hango namin sa Magnolia 132. Paano kami magtitinda na 130? Lugi pa kami ng 2 piso. Hindi po kasi namumunan kami ng 160, 150. Eh gastos pa namin pamasahe, eh no? <laughs> Meanwhile, the DTI is set to issue tomorrow the latest expanded SRP, which will include recently hiked prices of canned sardines and detergent products that were approved prior to the implementation of the three-month price freeze. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang believes that the statements of President Rodrigo Duterte favoring former Senator Bongbong Marcos will not affect the electoral protest of the Mar of Marcoses against Vice President Lenny Robredo. Rosalie Cost tells us why. A personal assessment. This is how Malacanang described President Rodrigo Duterte's statement on choosing a dictator to lead the country. The chief executive said in Cebu Thursday that he would rather have a dictator to lead the country to eradicate corruption and illegal drugs rather than someone like Vice President Lenny Robredo. Duterte has previously said that he prefers the likes of Marcos and Senator Cheese Escudero to succeed him if ever he steps down from office. I said you're better off choosing a dictator in the likes of Marcos. That is what is what I suggested. Malacanang believes the president's statements will not affect the electoral protests of former Senator Marcos against Robredo. The PET is um, conducting what is called, called revisions of the ballot. So it's the ballots that will be speaking and not the justices individually. They are just going through the ballots to ascertain kung sino talaga ang binoto ng tambayan para sa posisyon ng Vice Presidente. Meanwhile, Malacanang remains firm that Duterte has enough basis to support his claims against the brother-in-law of VP Robredo as well as Naga City being a hotbed of Shabu. Secretary Roque also believes a case will eventually be filed against the personality who the president said was responsible in the proliferation of illegal drugs in Bicol. Pwede man kayong mag-successyo, sa uh, constitutional successyo. It's Robredo. But she cannot hack it. I stand by my word na the hotbed of... Uh, Kasi yung brother-in-law niya ang nagdala ng drugs doon sa Bicol. Totoo yan. Siyempre, denial. Ang inaasahan nga natin, magkakaroon ng investigasyon. Kaya nga lang po, no, sasabihin na naman siguro political persecution dahil ka mag-anak ng vice president. So, ang importante talaga, eh, maisawalat ang uh, ebidensya. VP Robredo says in a statement that the president, instead of using the podium to throw allegations against her, should assure people that he is on top of the problems in the country. Robredo also points out that instead of glorifying a dictator, the chief executive should work to unify the nation and assure the people their sufferings will soon be eased. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The government only needs less than 13 billion pesos to shift to a federal system. This is according to Professor Edmund Tayao, a member of the consultative committee tasked to create the draft federal charter during the first federal briefing in Malacanang. This is contrary to the project projection of the National Economic and Development Authority that the government would need 
253 billion pesos for the additional public expenditures during the first year of implementation of federalism in the country. Ayao believes more technical discussions are needed between the economic managers and the consultative committee to arrive at a resolution on different expenses proje projections. Meron sila pang ibang detalye na hindi namin nakita. Kaya nga ang sinasabi namin, mas maganda siguro kung mas mahaba pa yung panahon na mag-uusap-usap. Pero ang sinasabi lang namin sa komite, hindi naman namin hinulaan yung mga provision. Interior and local government spokesperson Jonathan Malaya meanwhile clarifies that the economic managers do not disagree with federalism and the contradiction of expenses projections is the reason why President Rodrigo Duterte allowed the public to air their apprehensions and criticisms against the draft federal charter. The assumptions which they made, uh, we feel are mistaken because it bloated the cost. So what is the solution here? The solution here is more technical discussions. More technical discussions between both the, the, the con commissioners and the DBM and the NEDA so that lahat tayo hindi pa iba-iba ng figures. Malacanang defense President Rodrigo Duterte on his remark about the cases of rape in Davao City saying the public should not take it seriously. Rosalie Costa tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte said in jest during a speech in Cebu on Thursday that Davao City has the highest number of rape cases because it has many beautiful women. Nangingon sila nga daghang rape ang Davao. Basta daghang kwapa, daghang rape, yun na. The president's statement became controversial again and has drawn criticism from the opposition group, particularly the Gabriela Women's Party list. They say that by the statement of the president, the blame on rape is now shifted to women and the crime is repacked as something to be proud of. Records from the Philippine National Police showed that Davao City reported 42 rape cases in the second quarter of 2018, followed by Quezon City with 41 and Manila with 32. But according to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, the president's statement was just a joke and should not be taken seriously. I don't think we should give too much weight on uh, what the president says by way of a joke. No? Some may not approve, but you know, I can tell you this already. There's a difference between sense of humor in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And from what I have seen myself, although I'm from Luzon, people in the South, particularly in Cebu and the Visayas, they don't really take things as seriously as people in Luzon. Malacanang also maintains that the chief executive respects women, and this is evident by his appointment of some of them to top government posts. What the president has done recently is he has appointed yet another woman to the post of Chief Justice. This comes after his previous appointments, which were mostly women, including the Department of Tourism Secretary um, um, Romulo, as well as an acting secretary for the DSWD. He was also a woman, G. Um, Orago. No? Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Australian missionary Patricia Fox will ask the Department of Justice to reverse the deportation order of the Bureau of Immigration against her. My Bermudez tells us why. The camp of Australian non-Patricia Fox will file an appeal before the Department of Justice on Monday to overturn the Immigration Bureau's order for her to leave the country. Fox has been accused of participating in political rallies which is prohibited under the Philippine law. Last August 23, the Immigration Bureau denied the motion for reconsideration filed by Fox and upheld its earlier ruling. In its three-page decision, BI insisted that the deportation of Fox is an administrative proceeding and that the missionary has not presented any new argument in her motion. Her lawyers on August 20 requested the BI to extend her missionary visa, which is set to expire on September 5. Fox's camp is worried about the possibility that the nun would be arrested on September 6 if her request will not be granted. There are... Uh, probabilities at isa yon sa probability, probability. Kaya sinasabi namin ngayon, dapat hindi gawin yon ng Bureau of Immigration 
kasi kahit na mayroong deportation case or nag-expire yung kanyang visa, eh pwede naman nilang i-renew yung kanyang missionary visa pending yung deportation case. Fox's legal team is prepared to go to the Supreme Court in case their appeal is denied anew. According to Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque, Fox still has 30 days to make an appeal before the DOJ. He also has this advice to foreigners who wants to engage in political activities in the Philippines. We are according here all the remedies provided by law to appeal the decision of the CIT. I understand she has um, 30 days or so to appeal again to the DOJ. So, binibigay po natin sa kanya yan at pagkatapos na ma-exhaust ang lahat ng remedies at kapag hindi na bagong decision, she will be deported. Duralex, Sedlex, mensahe sa mga uh, dayuhan, wag po kayong mamuliti ka. Fox has expressed her desire to stay in the Philippines to help the poor even if she is ready to go back to Australia to be with her family. Don, pero hindi ko handa umalis sa Pilipinas permanently. Um... Siyempre, mga 28 years, nandito ako, tapos itong assignment ko sa Congress, assigned ako dito, dami ako na nakuha dito sa tao, ang totoo. It was in April this year when President Rodrigo Duterte admitted he ordered a probe on Fox's activities in the country. May Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Foreign Affairs advises Filipinos in Malaysia to prepare and to always bring their documents following the termination of Malaysia's voluntary deportation program. Maya Marquez tells us why. Filipinos are advised to carry their legal documents at all times following the end of Malaysia's amnesty program for undocumented workers on Thursday. The Department of Foreign Affairs on its website issued an advisory following an announcement that Malaysian authorities will launch a nationwide immigration crackdown as early as Friday and that the voluntary deportation program will no longer be extended. Ambassador Charles Hase assured that the embassy is ready to provide assistance to Filipinos who will be affected by the crackdown. Since the amnesty program was announced in 2016, Jose said that the embassy has assisted a total of 5,844 Filipinos, though the number is only less than 1% of the estimated 400,000 undocumented Filipinos working and staying in Malaysia. Meron pa rin iba na ayaw talaga umuwi, nakikipagsapa na rin. Uh, siguro uh, nahihirapan din sa Pinas kaya tinitiis na lang magtago-tago rito. Meanwhile, Malacanang encourages Filipino illegal immigrants in Malaysia to return home to the Philippines rather than being detained. Kung meron po talagang amnesty dyan, hinihikayat natin ang ating mga mamamayan, umuwi na kayo dito sa Pilipinas dahil alam po natin na kapag uh, nahuli kayo at illegal kayo, may kulong sa pagiging illegal migrant dyan po sa Malaysia. Maya Barquez, UNTV News and Rescue, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The European Union has partnered with the Department of Tourism and funded the agency's project on sustainable tourism. JL Asayo will tell us why. Over the years, Boracay has been recognized as one of the top tourist destinations locally and internationally. This until the government closed the island for a major rehabilitation. The reasons for the island's closure vary from irresponsible use of energy and water to carbon emission, among others. The European Union, meanwhile, has funded the project, the Zero Carbon Resorts, or ZCR, for sustainable tourism, which started in Palawan in 2010. The EU said the ZCR targeted the tourism sector as it has promising potential to introduce the program. This is a service sector, so you have a lot of employees. And I was actually surprised to see how many of the employees are so happy with our project. Why? because they learn in their workplace what they can apply at home. DOT Undersecretary Art Boncato believes this will be one of the answers to preserve the Boracay Island's pristine beaches after its reopening in October. And it's indicator, an indicator that everybody is really into achieving something towards sustainable tourism. So it is, it is something that can be actually replicated and become part of the norm now. 
A wellness resort owner from Tagaytay City said they have no regrets when they became a member of the CCR as they shifted their establishment into an eco-friendly and sustainable tourism site. Ah, sa back of house po namin, meron kaming, we have an, a recycling area, we've got a grey water harvesting system, we've got a bukashi fertilizer system. I think it also goes beyond profit. Dapat hindi lang profit inisip natin, inisip rin natin yung ano, yung... Uh, protecting the environment. Through the partnership with the DOT, the EU is looking forward to seeing all hotels, inns, community-based facilities, and dive resorts in Boracay participating and supporting the campaign on sustainable tourism. Three to 5,000 compliant rooms are ready to accommodate tourists that will flock to the Boracay Island once it reopens on October 26. JL Asayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Wishers and OPM artists congratulated and thanked Wish 1075 during the 143 Wish Party last night. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. Wish 1075 treated wishers with a free concert last night for the 143 Wish Party. This as Wish FM celebrates its four years on air. Among the wishers in the party is Filipino-American YouTube vlogger Rachel Ashley. I listen to Wish 107.5 every day, so that's how it's been a part of my life. Um, I just wish you guys many, many more subscribers, a lot of views, and I, um, I'm excited to see where this will take you. OPM artists thanked Wish 1075 as they share the station's contribution to their career. Um, Wish 1075 has done uh, a lot of things. Sa aming lima. So, yun, we are very thankful na, na pinagkatiwalaan po kami ng wish. Ngayon, nabigyan kami ng ganitong big break. Uh, marami na mas lalong nakakilala sa amin, hindi lang sa mga kanya-kanyang lugar namin, kundi hanggang international. So, uh, I'm Mitt Matis Yao, an international artist. At the same time, people um, see my other version of me. So, I'm very happy and I'm very grateful na binigyan ako ng opportunity ng wish na makakanta sa wish bus. Meanwhile, wishers are up for something new and big in the future. Wish 1075 innovator Kuya Daniel Razon excites wishers with the announcement of the launching of Wish Bus in Hollywood next month and the other wish bus that will travel throughout the country. Moreover, Wish Covery Season 2 will also air soon with some of the country's renowned songwriters participating in the competition. I appreciate really from all of us ang support na po ninyo na ipinakita ay maraming maraming nagawa at naabot. And I wish for Filipino music to conquer not only the Philippines but the globe. With God's help and our prayers, this wish will come true. Leslie Lombowan, UNTV News and Rescue, Tagig City. The Philippine National Police cites UNTV as one of its partners in public service. Let's find out why from JL Asayo. The Philippine National Police underscores the importance of good community relations for the success of its campaign against criminality and maintaining peace and order in the country. With this, the PNP continues to implement measures to improve its rapport with the community by placing programs in radio and television, which will enable them to immediately disseminate important public information. These include the Police at Your Service program, which airs weekly via Radio La Verdad 1350 and UNTV. This program slot was freely given by the station to PNP as part of its public service thrusts. In recognition of this partnership, the PNP cited UNTV and Radio La Verdad during the celebration of Police Community Relations Group founding anniversary at Camp Crame on Thursday. The award will be received by Mr. Dr. Daniel Rizon, President and Chief Executive Officer, UNTV. Kuya ay naririyan always 
sa lahat ng panahon na kailangan nila yung UNTV, hindi yan ipinagkakait ni Kuya Daniel. And Kuya Daniel is very supportive sa anuman adikain po ng Philippine National Police as a whole. The PCRG also announced during the program its plans to launch another public service program called Global Police Community Relations. Because we want to reach out to our kababayans in different parts of the world, especially yung mga mararaming Pilipino like in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Europe and even United States and some other countries po dito sa Asia. JL Asayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City.